Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day today. Uh, we've got a mixed bag for you. We've got some uh, programming tips. We've got a software updates that you might want to have a look at. And regardless of whether you work with Delphi or Free Pascal or any other modern Pascal equivalent, hopefully you'll find something here today. But first of all, I got a little package delivered to me from Amazon yesterday. And... Uh, Inside there was a book which a subscriber sent to me. In fact, it was the author of a book called Object Pascal My Way, uh, The Language That Doesn't Age It Gets Better by Ricardo uh, Sonato. I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. Um, it's got 240 pages in it. Uh, what do we have? Mini database, that's in the last chapter. So what do we have here? Um, why Lazarus and Free Pascal? Ah, okay, ten chapters in all. Um, the foundations of the language, uh, functions, conditions, classes, exceptions, libraries, and a concrete example. So... We're going to have a read of this over the next month or so, and I'll give you maybe updates as I go, depending upon how we go, but let me know what you think. Have you already read this book, um, if you've got it? So, uh, let's have a little look at the preface, shall we? So, in a universe where today's programming language uh, is swiftly replaced by a more agile framework, and what seems indispensable today might be forgotten tomorrow. Yet amidst this relentless flow, certain tools and approaches retain timeless value, not out of nostalgia, but because they are rooted in the very foundations of computational thinking. Among these, Pascal, and in this more evolved form, Object Pascal, remains an ideal training ground for anyone who wishes to learn programming with clarity, rigor, and logic. Who wrote this section? Uh, Andrea Tonin and Iren Fabry, so sounds like a, this could be a good text, so this is the modern text, it came out this year, uh, I'm not quite sure how long ago, but this is definitely a new text uh, for people who write in Object Pascal, so I think uh, while it may be, may concentrate on uh, Free Pascal and Lazarus, if you are just using, let's say, modern Pascal in general, you'll get something out of it. So, now, what will we do second? Um, so, first, the next one is, and by the way, I don't have any affiliations with any of these uh, products or tools. Um, so, DevArt, they have... Uh, updated, well a major update I should say, with their ODBC drivers. So if you're looking or if you use uh, components for connecting to databases which is more than just the standard uh, SQL or MySQL, it can also connect to Salesforce etc. Um, there's been a major update here with uh, GUI for Mac OS and Linux, PostgreSQL 18 and enhanced security. So, uh, I did a video on their particular products a little while back. Um, I, it was in, I was using Delphi at the time for my videos, but they are nice uh, tools or components for software development, especially when you want to look at, um, dare we say, non-standard databases. And they do include things like, if I can find it, like um, OAuth2 authentication. So... This allows you to concentrate on the business logic of your application and not have to worry about the intricacies of things like, you know, authentication. Important that, however important that is. So, uh, if you're DevArt user, um, they've got a new update out there. The next one is Code Rage. So, Code Rage has just finished. It is what it was um, a two-week online software development conference. Um, it was only going to be one week but got extended into two because of all the uh, different sessions that people had put in submissions for. Uh, 
I was able to do, a, or I did a talk uh, on day six, which would have been the eighth, on green coding. Um, and there were a stack of sessions, uh, some relating to AI, some talking about how to run Delphi on Linux. There's some math uh, related stuff, uh, FireMonkey, um, a whole variety. So if you go to the code rage 2025, you can see what all the sessions are and then perhaps wander over to YouTube because they were all put there. So um, the only tricky part you might have is to, um, if you're looking at a particular uh, session you would be interested in, is to once you've, not so much once you've found the video you're interested in, but finding the bit within the video that you are wanting to look at. Yeah, it would be it would be nice or good if they had chapter markings to identify where one uh, session started and the next and and then ended and, and so on. So uh, number three, um, let us have a look at pass build. So. It was uh, mentioned on the forums. Uh, you can also find out stuff if you are on the uh, free Pascal mailing list. And But this is called Pass Builders 1.0. It's a modern build automation tool for free Pascal projects inspired by Apache Maven. Um, and the source code you can get from this location on GitHub, which we've got here. And, okay, command line tool again. So it follows the principle of convention over configuration uh, and with sensible defaults, allowing you to override only what you need to change. Now, if you want to go into the whys and wherefores, have a look at the uh, post here on the forums here and subsequent discussion. And you can, uh, and you can also find out more about its features, etc. Um, and so on. So if you're looking for something to take the pain away from building large uh, free Pascal projects, uh, this will handle, uh, discover your, your units, handle resources, uh, m allow you to support multiple build profiles, etc. cetera. Uh, then this might be the tool to help you manage or a build system that can scale with your project. So. Oh, this one now, courtesy of the uh, West Australia Delphi user group, uh, they had Josh from a uh, business in Melbourne whose name escapes me, but the, he developed a tool in Rust called Pass Format, and the idea where was the format or to format Delphi code? It uh, is somewhat. He said it was somewhat limited in the um, somewhat limited in their options um, but that can also be a good thing especially when you know if you have let's say five different users you can potentially get five different formats from them so um, something to force everyone to use the same style can be a good thing so uh, this particular uh, tool is also can be uh, on github it is open source and intended for reformatting of Delphi code to um, follow a particular style. Uh, so again, it's another thing to support the language to get consistency in formatting of source code. And let's say build up, build up the ecosystem of uh, build tools. On a related note, um, there is also TMS, I think, I'm not quite sure when this actually happened, but I found out about it just a couple of days ago where this uh, TMS smart setup, so from the TMS software group, um, this particular tool went uh, open source, I believe, so, and it is a tool for automating the installation, build and management of both projects and packages in Delphi, C++, and Lazarus. So while it provides first-class support for TMS software components, it is designed to work with any project, whether they were from TMS or not. So, um, but again, we're looking at ways of making the life of the software developer easier 
uh, to allow them to, I'm going to say, to concentrate on what they need to do, and that is, you know, problem solving and not have to maybe deal with the nitty gritty, you know, today at least with um, getting your, making sure you've got the right packages and installing the packages, etc., that you need for your project. So, so you can, the documentation is from the TMS software website, which you can do and they also welcome contributions. If that is something which you feel could make your life a bit easier, um, ha give it a look at. I will provide links for everything um, that we talked about in this video below. Um, so far, now are ah, the practical programming tips. So, let us switch over into, okay, so here we are going to now switch into um, our environment we're running Lazarus and one of the things which can happen when uh, pro when you project changes over time is that you may get units which are no longer used and hang around in your users clause so for example here let me just drop something like a query on here and maybe a uh, let's let's why don't we just add a chart in here? We're not going to do anything with it, but we are going to save it. So, so now when we save it, save this, and we go back into our form here, you will see there is uh, more units that get added into the um, more form. Yeah, sorry, more units get added into the users clause. You know, to handle the addition of these. Uh, components we've added so now if we were to uh, just delete these so we get rid of that one and we could also get rid of that one and save it again you will find that they don't get removed from here so how do we or what can we do to uh, identify and then remove those particular units so what we can do here is to, if we were to right mouse click, well actually one way is that if you do actually build your program, um, one of the hints that may come out will tell you that a unit is no longer used. Um, but the other way is to, if you right mouse click on your code, you then go to refactoring. Then under refactoring, you have this option here called unused units. So if we click on that one, it will list or show us those units in both the interface section and the implementation section that are not used. And then on the bottom here, we've also got the, uh, a button here to uh, remove all, remove, selected and cancel. So let us see what happens when we click remove all. So they get removed from the users clause. So we'll just save that change again and see what happens. Now we'll just do a build again. So that's been rebuilt. Let's go to this. Just go to this one here and see if there's anything that could be removed as well. So unused units. There are none. So and if there are none, then you obviously you won't see any units under there. So. Uh, unused units can basically, even if you were to strip out code, it has to be by the fact that it will be in the user's clause, I mean it's going to go down and do something in it when you are building your project. So the best thing that you can do is if you do have uh, unused units is to remove them from your project and that can help to make your compilation time a bit faster. So, um, that is it for this video. So basically we've got a, a book here which you might be interested in having a look at. You can get it on Amazon and all other in, in your good bookstores. Um, also a uh, shout out to Paul uh, for the pass format uh, video. Like they're always interested in those sorts of tools and um, until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you on the other side.